Welcome to All About Kids, and uh, we are here on the set of The Walleye Kid, which is being produced by Theatre Moo, an Asian American theater company in the Twin Cities, at Intermedia Arts, which is in South Minneapolis. Once upon a time, on a farm in Minnesota, <laughs> there lived a man and a woman. And it's October the 31st, Halloween, and we're having a great time. We just had a, a show this afternoon, and we have two of the actors from it, Sunmi Shomet, Hello. who's the narrator and the princess, and Jin Ming Lai, who is Annie, who is the lead character in the play. And the play basically deals with um, a story of Annie as, as a young Korean adoptee who um, arrives in magically uh, to a couple in Minnesota um, by via a walleye fish, a giant walleye fish. And and what happens is we follow her story as she searches for her birth mother and goes back to Korea on a magical journey. Typhoon carried Annie all the way to the shore of that faraway land, Korea. I just want to start talking about some of the um, ideas or some of the thoughts of the play. Um, and to begin with Jin Ming, I ask you first. <laughs> um, what was it like for you to, to play the character? Mm, well, it was, it was weird because the character Annie was like me, but she wasn't like me mm -hmm. because we both had like two cultures, mm -hmm. yet I feel she had more questions about her identity and who she was and where she came from. Mm -hmm. But how come nobody at school looks like me? That's because they're not from Korea. Why am I from Korea? Because that's where you were born. Maybe when you grow up, we'll go visit Korea and we'll look for her. Is she lost there? In a way, she is, Annie. Can I go get her? Maybe when you grow up. So, because Jin Ming is Chinese American, mm -hmm. so she and and she is not an adoptee herself, but she is um, uh, has, as she says, a lot of similar questions in a way. But Sunmi Shomet is actually a Korean adoptee, has mm -hmm. grown up in the United States, and and why don't you talk a bit about how the play reflects some of your experiences or some mm. of the experiences of the people that you know? Yeah, um, I think, well, I think the best thing for me was being able to perform it because I didn't have any role models. Mm -hmm. um, any, I didn't see any, you know, have any teachers that were Korean or I didn't have, um, I never went to a play and saw Asians in a play. So it's just, it's just great to be able to perform something that I'm so close to and look out in the audience and see so many kids that, that are growing up more in touch with their identity and, and, and they can see someone that they relate to, mm -hmm. you know, very closely to instead of just um, in something they're going through. They, they see someone that looks like them, mm -hmm. that has the same experience and that has the same questions that they had. So, Yeah, that's great. Um, uh, I think that's one of the important things for us is, is that the audiences and all the audiences that we've seen, there are, have been a number of Korean adoptee kids in them and their response has been really very positive and we've really been happy about that because the issues it raises for them I think are very important and I think they're dealing with them. I think even for the parents, a lot of the parents it's been very important for them. It's not just an entertaining uh, um, play but it's a play that really helps them deal with some of the issues. Um, in it. Um. Well, some kids, they said I was sneaky. Because they said I come from a chink family and they have slanty eyes. Who said that? It was just some kids. We gotta talk to their parents. No, Dad, please don't. Well, listen, Annie, we just can't let kids say things like that. I just wish I could come from Korea. Annie, that that's not the answer. For you as an actor in it, uh, how do you feel, Sunmi, about playing the narrator and, 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 mm. and then the princess? I love it. I'm, I mean, I've, I've had the opportunity from the director, <laughs> <Who's that>? Rick, <laughs> to, 
to create a lot of my own movement. Um, and it wasn't just like the traditional narrator that you see that comes out with the book and says this happened and this happened. It was, you know, using a lot of movement, a lot of um, Asian movement, mm -hmm. and and learning about Korean dance as well, um, Korean movement, and being able to incorporate that. So I've learned a lot. Great. And for um, Jin Ming, um, it's in another way. Um, how was the Character for you in terms of, of playing it in the second part, where you go through the fo where they you see the folk story. Is that like was that a whole different experience from the? F well, like playing. Yeah. Being in the story. Yeah. Well, they sort of were similar. Mm -hmm. You know, they sort of they sort of meant the same thing, but they the the fairy tale carried it much farther and you could use your imagination, it sort of meant, it sort of told me. In the first act, I asked questions. I wanted to know everything. Mm -hmm. In the second act, I, I knew sort of the story, some of my past, and sometimes, you know, life can't, like, supply you with all the answers, but, but somehow Annie seemed to realize that, and she accepted that pretty mm -hmm. Sin me, you can talk about in terms of just coming to a point where you can begin to accept that maybe there aren't answers mm -hmm. per se, but then there's understanding e without necessary specific answers. Yeah, I mean, one of the the greatest things that I've learned about from the play is about the Korean Han. You know, mm -hmm. this this concept that there's this sadness inside and growing up as an adoptee mm -hmm. you know my mother kind of say to me whenever I was sad don't be like that mm -hmm. and when I learn more about the Han and that you have the sadness and it's it's innately Korean and that you just need to take care of it and accept it and transform it all the time um, it answered a lot it made me feel proud to be Korean mm -hmm. um, and it made me you know it's like play talks about as an adoptee, you kind of grow to accept that you don't have all the answers about where you've come from. And at the same, at one you know, one side of that is a is a curse because you you always have questions about your identity. But another side is a blessing because no one tells you what you can't do because you've come from some mm -hmm. mysterious place. You know, mm -hmm. you've come to be, and that's all you know. You mm -hmm. don't know. You know, you have a lot of mystery in your own imagination about where you've come from, mm -hmm. and it leaves a lot of room for possibilities for what, for creating who you are. So, you know. Yeah, one of the things I want to mention is also um, that Sunny Case is the co-author of the play, and much of the second act about the the about the Han and about um, the folk tale are really her writing, and I really want to make sure that that people understand, because Sunny Case herself is a Korean adoptee also and has a really deep understanding of that experience, I think, like Sunmi. And, and Sunny has been working in the Korean adoptee community with families, with the kids. And so I think that that was really important that, that she really bring that to the fore. And mm -hmm. so that was really a, a great experience for, for Sunny and myself to work together as writers because I felt like the two of us really had a great time. It was just an extraordinary time because writers, it's such, a, it's such an individual experience writing and, and to have two writers to accept that they're going to combine their work together and uh, both of us to say, no, I don't think that works and it's your piece and it's not going to work. <laughs> and it's my piece and it's not going to work. But, but, but we went through that and we were able to deal with that because we always both recognized what was best for the whole piece was was what we were looking for, and mm -hmm. I think in this case it really worked very well. And I, and I want to thank Sunny because she's not here today, um, but uh, she's been very totally integral in the creation of this piece, yeah. and it's been great. Another another great thing for me about the piece is that there's a lot of comedy, and you know it's <laughs> not like it's not like mm -hmm. this. It's not a downer. It's honest, mm -hmm. you know. But but there it's it's not like um, you know, it's not about being a victim. Mm -hmm. It's about your journey in mm -hmm. life, mm -hmm. and there's ups and downs. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that was really important that there was a, a lot of humor 
yeah. in the first act, and then there's a, and there's a lot of very. It's I feel I agree. It's very optimistic. It's very. It's about a catharsis of going, bursting through something, and and on a journey that takes you somewhere. That's very positive, I think, and that mm -hmm. is really. I agree that that's really important. So Annie was swept up, flying across the sky, high above the cornfields, climbing over the peaks of the Rocky Mountains, and plunging deep into the Pacific Ocean. She was on her way to Korea. about the like what I liked being being Annie and stuff mm -hmm. like that was well it was kind of cool also to hang around like Korean adoptees too and like they sometimes they talked about like what they felt like and I listen and try to get that into my character too and that was sort of hard to you know well, this is a professional act. <laughs> she takes all that backstage talk in the dress rooms and all that and, and understands because we have several, not only Sun Mi Shomet, but Katie Leo and Jennifer Weir uh, are also Korean adoptees. They're also in the play and they're, uh, they've been talking and, and I've talked with them and Sunny's talked with them about the play and about their thoughts about it and so that we've had great input. It's been really collaborative in that sense also and I think that's been really important. And, and of course, a professional actress like Jin Ming um, takes advantage of all those little bits of information, um, and she's been great. I've been really, I've what has really, I've been really impressed with, and I have to say, is is Jin Ming's totally professional work ethic and understanding of acting, and I think that's one of the. Perhaps you can give us a bit about your background in theater, where you've got your training and things like that. Mm. Well, actually. 
actually, I got into theater pretty abruptly. Like, my, my dad, he sort of just was like, let's go try out for a play. And so we tried out, and, you know, I had fun with it. It was sort of weird, and I, I fell in love with theater right away. I've done some stuff with the Children's Theater Company and Pangea, and a lot of people have helped me. Okay. Like, this theater is so cool, all the people. <laughs> so we're a cool theater company. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Theater Moo. It should be Theater Cool, actually, but it's Theater Moo. And it's at Intermedia Arts, which is a great place. And, and this is our second, third production here, and, and uh, we're hoping to do more productions here. We've had a great time. Um, any last thoughts? or um, One of the things I just want to say is, is that what's really been great for me is seeing some of the very young kids, some of the very young Korean adoptee kids, five, six, seven years old, and their enthusiasm about the piece. And one of the mm -hmm. fun things we just had today at intermission is our actors go out and get drinks and hang out in the lobby <laughs> during the show. <laughs> well, Jin Ming went out to get a drink, and what was great is there was a little six-year-old boy whose jaw just dropped when he saw Jin Ming walk past him, because he somehow couldn't believe that somebody that was in the play was in another world, came and was walking in his world. And it was great. It was like, Jinmi was kind of like walking <laughs> around, but the little boy was like standing there looking at her like she was a movie star. <laughs> it was great. And so that was so interesting. It's such an interesting <laughs> phenomenon. And, but the kids really have liked it a lot, and I've just been really uh, happy about that. Yeah. Oh, I have one more thing. One more thing, OK. Yeah. Last. What inspired you to write this play? Oh, this is going to be a long one. <laughs> um, <laughs> Actually, it's partly because uh, a number of our actors and, and participants in Theater Mu are Korean adoptees, and that story has been very important um, for us. But also, I have um, the, the Peach Boy, which is Momotaro, is a Japanese um, folktale. And it's about a couple who get a, a boy when, when he comes out of a, a huge peach that they find. And it's always been a fascinating story for me. And when I thought of that story and I thought of the Korean adoptees that I knew, there was somehow a melding of those ideas. And, but then I, I thought, but I want something that's Minnesotan, Minnesotan, and that fish is about to sneak on stage here. I, I want something Minnesotan about it. And I thought of the, the walleye has been something that's been on my mind also. So I just thought, what if the child came out of the walleye? And then that was, that was it. That was right from that point the story started. And I think that that was really, um, we've had some great, uh, uh, designers, and so one of the featured points of the play has been the walleye itself. It's like a six-foot uh, styrofoam fish. If, do you want to bring it over here? And we'll give give the cast a little quick look at it. And uh, it's been just one of the really fun parts of the play. And um, Robert Bruce Brake was our props designer, and this fish is big enough for all of us to eat. And uh, so we've had a great time with this fish, and, and uh, the audience has enjoyed it a lot. And um, that's it. And Jin Ming's about to have lunch. But any, and your last thoughts, Shin, oh, Shin Ming? Oh, um, I don't know. I'm just yeah. having a great time. time. It's, it's, and it's, it's a great play because everyone gets to play a lot of different characters, except for Jin Ming. But, but everyone else around her plays a lot of different characters, so it's truly mm -hmm. a collaboration, mm -hmm. and it's truly an ensemble working together. And it's been... It's great. I get to watch. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing down here? I think I was dreaming. Was it a nightmare? No. It was kind of beautiful. Can you tell us about it? Well, I went on a wonderful ride on the walleye. Our walleye? It, it took me to Korea. To Korea? And there was this orphanage and... And did you find your birth mother? No. But I met a shaman. And did the shaman help you? Yes. She told me I had a heart inside of me. That's a river. Where I get all those feelings about being Korean come from. And she told me a story. What kind of story?
And even though nobody knows us there, we have this heart inside of us. And it's real. And so, Annie returned to her bed. But she didn't sleep much that night. She had so much to think about. At dawn, the next morning when Annie awoke, she looked out of her window and saw two great kingdoms below. She knew that she too had climbed that mountain and found her own soul living at its peak. I'd like to talk a bit about Theatre Moo. Um, it's an Asian American theatre company that's been in the Twin Cities for about six years now. We're in our seventh season. Um, we've been developing Asian American actors and writers and directors and, and having a wonderful time. Um, we've gotten some great reviews and a lot of support from funders and audiences. And so it's been one of the important developments, I think, in the Twin Cities in, in theatre in the last uh, five or six years. Um, part of, I think, a whole blossoming of Asian American culture in the Twin Cities, um, a place where one would not necessarily think of Asian Americans being there. But we're actually here and we're having a great time in the Twin Cities. So if any of you are interested in the arts, come to the Twin Cities because there's a lot happening here. Not just theater, but a lot of other arts activities. Um, theater Moo itself, though, not only does main stage productions, of which the Walleye Kid is, is one of them, um, it also does a, a extensive outreach program. And we do many different pieces and um, for that. One of them is Taiko, which is Japanese drumming. Another is a series of short pieces like one by Sunmi Shomet, which is called Sunmi Yu American Girl. And she um, uh, has done that at a number of schools, uh, elementary and high schools, forests and community colleges. And she's, why don't you talk a bit about that piece? Because it's about mm. Korean adoption experience also. Yeah. It, um, it's a piece I developed with Sadawa Mystery, who's an associate artistic um, director. director an with theater director. Mu, outre <laughs> an outreach director with Theater Moo, and he helped me develop a piece I wanted to write for a long time about growing up as an adoptee. And so it started out as a monologue that was kind of sad about growing up and getting teased. And it turned into, he just said, we have to take a totally different approach. You have to take, you have to take the humorous approach. So he had me make a list of all of the stupid questions I've ever been asked about adoption. Great. And so I make, wrote down like 30 questions I've been asked, like, are you related to Bruce Lee? Um, <laughs> like, do you see less because your eyes are slanted? <laughs> All these questions. And then things that directly had to do with being um, adopted, which were like, how are you Jewish? You yeah. know, I, I was adopted by a Jewish family, and, um, and um, how is your hair curly? Asians don't have curly hair, things like that. So, so from that, I, d I developed six different characters. Um, just stock characters like a, a, a southern bimbo and a, a, um, a redneck, you know, guy from from Lord knows where, <laughs> truck yeah. driver guy, and put and put it all together in a short monologue um, that just goes through really quickly what life has been like growing up as an adoptee. Yeah. So in a rapid fire kind of yeah. fashion, and it's been yeah. great. Though the response has been great to it. She's had some really uh, powerful responses from yeah. audiences in terms of that Yeah, piece. like one of the greatest things was being mm. at a high school, South High School, and I grew up in Detroit, Michigan, where the community was predominantly African American, and I was the only Asian, and my brothers were the only Caucasian kids. Um, and after the, after the show, one of the most meaningful things for me was um, a little African American um, boy came up to me and said, said, I didn't know those things hurt, hurt you when I didn't know that um, Asian kids got hurt when we, when we teased them like that. And I said, well, how does it feel to you when people tease you? And he goes, well, I hate it. He go, and I said, well, wh what are you going to do now when your friends tease, tease some of the Asian kids at your school? He goes, well, I'm not going to do it. I said, well, are you going to stop them? He goes, well, I'll try. <laughs> so, so that really yeah. meant a lot to yeah. me. Yeah, so, well, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. And you did a performance at the YMCA for a big dinner for them. Yeah, and at the YWCA, y I think. YWCA, yeah. yes. It was a benefit. It was um, all women um, celebrating women um, in the arts and in the community, community action. 
And that was great. Yeah, yeah great, great response. Thank you. And Sunny Case also has her own story called uh, My Story, and she tells her story of, of her growing up and going back to Korea on a trip and, and bringing back a baby, a Korean baby, for another family here. And that's a very touching story. And so we've had some very positive response to that, too. Yeah. So. so we're soon going to have Jin Ming working for us <laughs> in our outreach program because yeah. we haven't got it yet. But um, <laughs> we have a short version of the walleye, uh, a very, like only a 30 minute version because the production we do now is a full hour and a half. But um, we have that going out to the schools and we, we may be able to get Jin Ming on, a, on her day off from school when she gets to class um, to, to do the story, <laughs> that, that short piece for us. And mm -hmm. that'd be great. <laughs> Okay, that's basically um, our program for today, and thank you for being with us at All About Kids. <laughs>